Welcome to the Chief Architect Kitchen Demonstration. My name is Emily and I will be presenting for you today. Before we get started with our kitchen design, I'd like to go over the GoToMeeting control panel um, because you do have a couple different options. So I'm going to talk about audio here first. The standard setup is using your mic and speakers. I do have everybody muted today, so you don't need a mic. You'll just need your speakers active. And if you're not able to hear me correctly, select this uh, sound check, and that will also um, kind of even out the levels of the audio to help that out. If that's still not working, select that telephone radial and you can call in. Below that is our questions area. So if you do have any questions throughout today's webinar, feel free to type those in to the bottom box and select send. And we'll be replying to those throughout the webinar. So feel free to um, send those at any time or um, at the end, of course. And this toolbar on the left hand side will have a little arrow there so you can restore the larger area and control your audio and questions. So today we're going to just start out with a blank plan, design our space, and then create our custom cabinetry layouts, place in our appliances, um, drop in a backsplash into the kitchen, and then we'll also place an island in this space. We'll then move on to our custom ceiling tools, some different lighting options and electrical within the program. And then we'll finalize that plan by creating a schedule. I'll show you what's generated in our materials list, and then we'll create our plan set. So let's start working in Chief Architect. So this is the kitchen we'll be designing today. So we'll create that space and start um, working in that area. So I'm going to open up Chief Architect here. So across the top, you'll find our default tools. And these are kind of all of your standard tools that you'll you'll be working with. Uh, we also have a drop down so you can find additional tools in the drop down options if you'd like. I'm going to start out by using our straight exterior wall. We also have curved wall options and through our kind of child options. So we have our parent tool and then we have our child options here. We have the exterior, um, an invisible wall, a railing, interior wall, so a lot of different options to use and I'll show you a couple different options as we go through today's webinar. I'm just going to click and drag this out and as I drag that out you'll notice that we do have temporary dimensions appear so I have an idea of how long that wall is and I'm just going to drop in these walls here just click and drag. I'm going to zoom out slightly just by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can zoom in and out. You can also hold down the scroll wheel to pan your plan. So those are some shortcuts for navigation. And we'll just create our room area. So within Chief Architect, you're able to create just one room or you can do the entire structure, whatever scope of design you need to accomplish there. Once all of your walls are connected, a living area is defined and the square footage is calculated for you. Let's get into a 3D view and see what's been created. At the top here, I'll use my camera view tool. And the first uh, camera we'll be using is our perspective floor overview. So with one click, that will get us into our 3D view. Once all of the walls are connected, uh, you'll notice that our flooring is automatically generated for us. We have base molding in here and the program also creates an automatic ceiling for you. This view will cut it off so we have that nice dollhouse view. Um, so within our 3D view we can navigate and continue editing and working in this view. If you're working in a small space or for some reason you don't need a wall, um, you can also select your wall that you've placed and we can make that invisible. Once you select an object in Chief Architect, you'll find an editing toolbar at the very bottom here. One of the options is open objects. So that enables us to open the item that we've selected and really get into some advanced details here. With our wall options, I can just hit invisible. But before I do so, I just wanted to show you we do have many different wall types that you can choose from. I'm using a siding six. Um, but you can choose from a large list here, or you can also define your own custom wall type if you'd like. So back to our general, 
I will select invisible, select OK, and now that's an invisible wall. It's still a wall because we need to define our space, um, but now we can uh, open up that space and really see what we're doing in here. We can also single click in that room. So just click on the floor and you'll see the entire room is highlighted. I'm going to open up our room for specification. And I would like to change our room to a kitchen. So we can change our room types right from this drop down. You can also change the room name if you wanted to be a little bit more specific there. Underneath our structure panel, we do have control over our ceiling heights and floor heights. So if this is um, an existing space and we need to adjust our finished ceiling height, so we've measured out the space and the ceiling height is a little bit taller, uh, maybe it's 117 and 5 eighths, we can modify that right in here. If you have a sunken living room or a sunken room, you can adjust your floor height as well and drop that down. And further down, you'll notice that the ceiling over this room is checked, so that's automatically placing a flat ceiling over this room. You can uncheck that for your ceiling planes to follow your roof. Um, and then through our floor, we can get into our floor structure a little bit. And let's change our uh, flooring. So I still want to have a hardwood floor, but I'd like to um, change that material. So we're going to select our material, that's going to open up our library. And I'm going to just minimize all of these little arrows here to give you an idea of our library. The Chief Architect Core Catalog, this contains all of the generic items that you'll be using throughout your design process. Um, that comes standard with the program. We also have bonus and manufacture catalogs. Those can be downloaded right through our website. So you can find those um, on chiefarchitect.com. And then we also have our user catalog. And this is your own custom catalog. So any materials you import, any 3D objects you import, or in my case, I have found some different libraries through my manufacturing core catalogs that I use frequently. So I've created my own custom folder here and I'll be applying our antique natural um, Armstrong flooring to this space. So I'll select OK and then we'll select OK again here. One more and now we have applied our new flooring to the room. And now that we have our room defined here, we can um, continue working. So for instance, we can get right back into our wall tool and draw out some interior walls here. Let's say we would like a pantry. So I'll just click and drag these out and finish out that little space. All right, well, let's get back into our floor plan view and dimension out our space. We have a app called Room Planner that's a very handy tool to create your as-built. You can take that out to the field, get your measurements, and then bring that right into Chief Architect. Uh, so that is a great efficient tool to be using. If you just have those written down, you can, of course, create this space and then dimension afterwards. So once I select a wall, we can single click on the parallel and perpendicular dimension to modify that wall. So I'll single click on the parallel dimension here first. And I need to bring that out slightly. We're going to do 18 feet and 9 inches. And then we can tell the wall how we'd like that to adjust. If we'd like to lock the bottom here, we can select um, this option, hit enter on the keyboard, and it will adjust the top. So it gives you some different um, options when you're creating that. I'll single click on our wall over here, and I'm going to change that length. We're going to um, bring that back slightly. I'm going to bring that to 12 feet 4 inches. So that will adjust our room for us. And I'm going to just delete the room label in there. Now I'll adjust our dimension across. I'm going to bring that to 18 feet 5 inches. Hit enter. 
and then we can just do one more. We'll do eight feet seven just to get that in place. All right, now that we have all of our walls dimension, because I'm only working in this space here, I don't need to be concerned about the other walls for this design. I'm going to tile my views vertically. You'll see we have two different tabs across the top. So I can click on the tab and just drag that down so I can see my floor plan and 3D view at the same time. And that's a great tool if you um, have multiple monitors, you can just drag that onto a second monitor and it really gives you a lot of real estate to work in. Great for presentations as well. So I'm gonna just zoom in here with the scroll wheel on my mouse. Uh, select my door tool up here. We're going to talk about our door slightly. We have a couple right through the child options. So your hinge door, doorway, a sliding door, pocket door, bifold, and a garage door. I'm going to just drop in my doorway here. And let's open that up for specification. So we can double click on an item to open that up as well. Through our door specification, we can change our style. So this is a doorway, we don't need to really get into the style. Um, you can change the type after you've placed it, you can change it to a hinged if you decide that needs to modify. I'm gonna change our width here. I'd like that to be wide so we have a nice open area to bring items through. So we'll widen that out a little bit. We also have many different options through the panel down the left hand side that give you the flexibility to really customize your door, add an arch and so forth. That looks good, so I'll select OK and that will modify. And I'll use our temporary dimensions here to make sure that that is placed correctly. That needs to be uh, three feet, five and a half inches off of that wall. Hit enter and now we have that positioned correctly. And then maybe I'll just put a pocket door on the other side. For our doorway here, I would like to attach a sliding barn door to that. So I'll open up my library. The library browser um, you can open from this little shortcut up top. And I'll get into my user catalog. I've already found one in my core catalog that I'd like to use. We'll select that. And we can just bring that right over drop it into place and now that is positioned for us. All right, now let's get into our cabinet options. I'm gonna rotate around slightly here. And you know what, let's get into a different camera. I'll close out of this window and I'll open up just a, a full camera view here. So I'm gonna click where I'm standing and drag to my focus. Now we're in the room, you'll see our automatic ceiling placed over, and I'll go right up to my cabinet tool. We have our base cabinet, wall cabinet, full height, soffit tool. You have custom shelf and partition options, custom countertop tools, backsplash, and so forth. So we'll be using um, many of those throughout today's webinar. I'm gonna just bring my cursor into the plan, single click, and drop in our default base cabinet. So you can set up your cabinet size, the materials, the components uh, through your defaults before you get going, or you can also change them um, later down the road. So I want to change this cabinet and um, set it up as a default so the rest of my cabinets are the same. I'm gonna just open this up for specification. We're gonna make quite a few changes and then we'll set it as our default cabinet for the rest of the plan. So once we have that open, you'll notice that we do have different types that you can choose from, from standard to left radius end, angled front, bow front. So a quick little drop down for you. You can change your sizing right through here. And if you do have um, any like hanging cabinets, base cabinets, you can modify where it will be positioned from the finished floor, from the ceiling, and so forth. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in controlling your heights. And then modify here. For our countertop, it's gonna be um, kind of our standard options. 
I'm going to delete our backsplash because we'll be using our custom backsplash tool later in um, the design here. So I'll just remove the backsplash and then our toe kick has been placed. Through our panel on the left hand side we can get into our box construction. I'd like to have that framed. Maybe let's do three-fourths uh, for the separation. Select our inset and then through our front side and back panel here, this is where we can really control how that cabinet is made up. So for instance, if I single click on our drawer here, that will bring me into my drawer area and I can change the type. So if I'd like to change that to something else, I can definitely do that from this drop down. We can also change the height, so I'm going to make that six. And you can do that throughout the rest, and we'll be getting into this area a little bit further um, throughout the rest of our cabinet design. We can also really specify the sides and back of our cabinet, whether they have panels or if they're finished. So it really gives you that control over your sides and back of the cabinet as well. Through the door and drawer, I'm going to change our door to be a frame door. You can get into your library and find many different manufacturer and generic door and drawer styles. For our handles, I do want to get into our library for those. I'll get right into the core catalog, into our cabinet hardware, and find a pull that I like. So this is going to be for the door, so I'll do the, our vertical. And you'll see that placed. It looks like it needs to come down slightly, so let's bring that down maybe three inches and there we go. Let's create um, a different handle for the drawer as well. We're going to find that same one just as a horizontal. So I'll get right back into my library and find that exact same one as horizontal and there we are. So now we have the different components, hardware, door style that I'd like. However, I want to change the materials. I can do that right through the materials panel here. You can see all of the different options, but I want to show you a different route. Um, instead of going through that material one by one, I'm going to select OK here and use our material painter tool. I'm going to find a different material in our library and it is um, just right through our core catalog. We have many different materials for you, including different wood options. And I'm going to select an alder, this alder blonde. So with the material selected from the library, you'll notice my cursor changes to a spray can. And I can simply change the fronts. So right now I'm in component mode. You can see that down in the left-hand corner. If you change it to an object mode, it will do the entire box, all of your shelving, and everything um, in that object. We also have room mode, floor mode, or plan mode. So if you want to change uh, your materials throughout, you can definitely do that with one click. All right, so now this is the type of cabinet I would like as my standard base cabinet. So I'll single click on that. In my editing toolbar at the bottom, we have a set as default option. So I can single click and now that is my default. I'll close out of my library here, get right back into my base cabinet. And now once I place that same base cabinet, it's now that updated option that we changed. So it's definitely great to work with those defaults and get those set up. Makes it very efficient for you. If you bring your cursor right into the corner, it's going to drop in a corner cabinet. And let's open that up. I'm going to change our dimensions here slightly. We need a sink in here, so I'm going to make that a little bit larger. Underneath your options, you can uncheck diagonal door if you'd like to have a pie cut option. You can also add a lazy Susan. We'll be applying that sink in here, so I'm going to leave that as is. And then through your front tab, you can add, let's add a false drawer up um, above those doors so we can add additional items. Maybe we'll do that at six like our other base cabinet. And now that's placed in there. 
you can also get right into your door and drawer. I'm going to remove the handle. All right, so that looks great. Select OK. That's been updated. Then I'll just bump up our cabinet. So these are smart objects. They're going to bump next to each other and make that positioning easy for you. I'm going to resize that right in here. We're going to just drag that down to 18. I'm going to open that up for specification again here. Single click on your image. That's going to take you right to your front tab. So that's kind of a quick option there. I'd like to have a bank of three drawers here. So I'll change this one to a drawer and I can easily use our split horizontal option to make two drawers out of that. And you'll notice that we have these little uh, locks next to our items. So this enables you to lock a component. So this is really helpful if you're placing appliances in your cabinetry. You can lock it once it's positioned and sized correctly. And then if you're modifying anything around it, it's not affected. I'm going to unlock our drawer. So I'll select the drawer, unlock it, and now when I single click on my uh, vertical layout parent, I can equalize everything. So I can make sure everything is the same dimension across. All right, that's been adjusted. I'm going to bump up this other one. And before we get any further, I wanted to show you an image. Um, I found some inspiration on this area. I'm going to be working towards a range area. And I really like how these cabinets bump out and have a corner treatment on it. So we're going to modify our cabinets a little bit to resemble that image. I'll tile vertically again, just drag down that tab. I'll zoom in slightly. And a quick option to get to your arrow or select object tool. Uh, just hit the space bar on your keyboard. Then you can uh, get right to that arrow and select object tool, um, which is pretty nice and handy. All right, I'm going to just resize that right in our plan view here. Then we're going to open that up for specification. And I'm going to get into our box construction, check rounded for that corner treatment. And I'm going to do um, two and a half inches for that corner width. And then you can hit tab in these dialog boxes. Hitting tab just updates your view and updates those changes. So having a corner treatment on either side automatically uh, changed the dimensions for the door. So it brought it back to just one door for us. We also need to get right back into the general panel and through our countertop, I want to make sure that matches. So let's do two and a half there as well. All right, that looks good. So I'll select OK. Get right back to my base cabinet. Drop in one for our range. So I'm going to make that 36. Bring that one out. And once the corners connect, it will automatically join those. So I don't have to take any additional steps on removing that corner treatment on that connected side. The program's automatically going to figure that out for you. So now, um, another nice feature with Chief Architect and the efficiency, you can just click and drag out um, a selection box here, a marquee, and that will select both of those cabinets that I've already gone through all of the work in modifying. I'm going to copy those and we have this reflect about object tool so we can just reflect those right onto the other side and now all of that work that we've done is just resembled on the other side. Okay, I'm going to move out here just using that scroll wheel again zooming in and out. We're going to finish off this area with a full height cabinet. So I'll single click on that full height and drop that in and let's resize that. So it's at 34 in this space. I would like that to be 33. So I'm just going to open that up and change my width to 33. We're going to stick with some standard sizes here. And we'll make sure that everything looks good here. 
you'll notice with that extra little inch here we have a filler. So if that space is three inches or smaller, it's going to automatically place a filler in there for you. Of course you can turn that feature off if you'd like to have a little bit more control, um, but that's a really nice uh, feature that automatically does it for you. Alright, now that we have kind of this back wall placed, I'm going to start working back towards that corner cabinet with my wall cabinets. So I'll select the wall cabinet and drop that in. And I have already gone through, changed my size, um, applied our molding. So I'm going to open up that wall cabinet and show you here. Through your molding options, you can add different crown molding profiles. You can also create your own custom molding profile and uh, add that in here as that 3D molding. And then you can add like different molding on the bottoms, whatever you need to, you do have a lot of flexibility there. Underneath my uh, area here for the front side and back, we have this set as the auto right door. That means if I resize my cabinet to like I think it's 27 inches or larger, it's going to automatically resize that and place double doors in there. If we'd like to have a 27 inch cabinet with one door, we can just change that to be um, the door left. So then it won't automatically update. So just make sure you choose the door left or right depending on your um, specifications you need there and then it will no longer update uh, for you to have the double. So I'm going to um, copy that. Since we already made a modification, I'll just drag that right over, bump it over, and now we need a hood. So I have a hood already specified in my library here. So that's in my own custom library. So anything that you create, you can also just add to your library and then we can just drop that in. I'll drop it in right over here and then let's move that back into place. A quick option when moving objects, you can use our point to point move tool. Once that object's selected, you'll see that tool right down in our editing toolbar there. And we can just zoom in here, do the corner where it needs to be positioned and now that's uh, right back where we need that. So now that that's been placed, I'm going to single click on my wall cabinet there. And if you do single click and it selects, let's say that base cabinet, you can hit tab on your keyboard to get to the next closest object. So it kind of helps when you are uh, working with multiple objects there. So I'll just reflect that onto the other side. And in this case, um, I would like to modify that and make it a little bit larger. So we'll do a 27 inch. So I can just modify that right here. And now that that's 27 inches, you'll notice that it did not um, automatically update with the double door. All right, and with our hood here, I'm going to match materials. With our 3D view selected, I can then select my material eyedropper, single click on that alder blonde, and apply that to our cabinet there. All right, so we've kind of wrapped up our um, back wall here. I do need to place a few appliances. So let's drop in a sink right onto our corner cabinet. I'll just single click in that um, cabinet and it automatically places that for us. Also, let's drop in our range. So we can then just click right on that cabinet, drop that in. We also need a wall oven over on our full height so we can also search through our library. At the very top is our search bar and then once they come up in your view here you can of course scroll through. You can also right click on that and show in browser. So then you can get an idea of where that's located and search through the rest of those in that area. I'll single click and that will just automatically update my cabinet. If you need to be a little bit more specific, you can of course open that up and through the front side back panel.
that is where you can adjust that. So you can move it up or down and then add additional appliances. So if you wanted a warming drawer in here, you can do that as well. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and how you are controlling your cabinet and the, and the placing of that. So in our corner here, I'd like to add windows, bring a little light into this space. So we're going to get into our window tool and we do have just our standard window option which I'll be using, but also a bay window, box, bow, and a pass-through tool. I'm just going to drop in a window here and open that up for specification. We're going to change our width. That's going to um, widen out quite a bit here. Let's do maybe 48 inches. And for our height, um, I'm going to bring that up to 60. We're going to have a nice tall uh, window. Through the type, I'm going to change that to a fixed glass. I want to have a nice big view here. I'm going to bring over my image of what we'll be doing. So with our window, I don't want any corner posts. I just want a big scenic view outside of um, our window space there. So we're going to be uh, modifying to accomplish our corner window there. And then we can also get into our elevation references. So from the floor, I want the bottom to go above our countertop, which is 36. Let's bring that up to 40, floor to bottom. So that will um, enable us to bring it above our cabinets. And now that I have that um, placed, I'm going to select it and I'm going to bring it right into the corner. So just keep dragging and it will pop over to the corner here. I'm going to copy it, paste it onto the other side, and we'll click and drag that one right through to the corner. So it automatically puts that corner um, kind of post in there for us. Let's just open up one of those windows and through the frame panel we can uncheck has corner posts and now we have that nice big scenic view. You'll notice that we do have a backdrop already placed in our plan here. You can also go right through the library. Underneath our core catalog you can find all of the different backdrop options and through your import options you can also bring in your own photo. So you can definitely apply your own backdrop into that space. Alright, now that we have our wall completed on that side. I'm going to rotate around here slightly and we'll work on our other wall placing a few more cabinets here. I'll get into that base cabinet again and before I bring over another one I just want to copy our 18 inch reflect that onto the other side and now bump up our 24 inch we'll place a dishwasher there and then we'll also place maybe a 36 inch here and I'm going to open up that cabinet. I wanted to show you one more option. When we are designing our cabinetry we can also split vertically. So I use that split horizontal to add another drawer in there but splitting vertically we can also modify. Uh, maybe I'd like to have two drawers on one side so we can do a drawer, split that horizontally so we can have our doors and drawer and then still have that top drawer go all the way across. So very easy to modify and create your own custom vanity um, areas as well. We are going to place a refrigerator um, into the space next to this cabinet. So I want to make sure our countertop has a flat side so we're not having any overhang here. I like to have a built-in refrigerator look. So I'll use my panel and drop that right down. We can move that and bump it over. So with all of the different um, kind of snapping properties that the program offers, gives you a lot of efficiency when you are placing those um, down. I'm going to change the depth to 24. We're going to bring the height up to 81. And now we'll get right back into our library We'll select a refrigerator I have already found from our library. Like a nice large refrigerator, a lot of storage space there. 
and then I'll drop in a full height cabinet on the other side. We'll just drag that out slightly. Maybe we'll do a 36 inch cabinet. And now we're going to drop in a couple wall cabinets over our refrigerator space. So I'll find that wall cabinet again. And once we place a cabinet over a refrigerator space, it's going to automatically resize for us. Then I'll just drag that out. Uh, maybe we'll have this at 30 inches. Uh, let's change our depth to 24 and our width to 30. Another option for our front, we are able to change our door to have a hinged bottom or a hinged top. So if you wanted to do like a hopper door, you can definitely do that. And then just modify your hardware right through your door handle options. We, let's just change that to a knob and bring that up from bottom, maybe one and a half and bring that in to 15, so it's in the middle there. We can also add glass, so with one check uh, we can um, apply that glass right into the door. Select OK and you'll notice that that's been updated for us. I'll move that over slightly, we'll copy that and just bring one over right next to it. And then we can continue um, dropping in additional cabinet tree. Maybe I'll just make that one a little bit larger here. All right, so now that we have all of the cabinetry placed, I'm going to just drop in our dishwasher here. So I'll just drop that right into the cabinet. And now we have all of our we have all of our appliances and cabinets placed into the design. So I'm going to rotate around here slightly and we're going to talk about materials a little bit. So through our library here, we do have many different material options for you to choose from, from generic to manufacturers. Uh, I'm going to start by placing a stain on my cabinetry. So I'll just find a material through my core catalogs and we do have some different brown options. I'm going to try this dust option. So there's two different methods in applying a material. I'm just going to zoom in here to our base cabinets. So you can see the texture of our wood placed on those cabinets. So if you would like to just paint over your cabinetry, make sure that you have a spray can as your cursor. So with one click, it's just going to apply it as a complete paint material. If you'd like to blend that with the texture and have more of a stain, you can change the blend color with material. And now your cursor is a paint roller and you can single click and have the grain come right through that. So we are in object mode right now. I'm going to click on room mode and apply that to all of those other cabinets and then I'll use my material eyedropper to manipulate that one that we um, changed to the paint. Alright, so next let's um, drop in our backsplash. So I can find our custom backsplash tool right through our cabinets again. I'll just single click on this wall and it will automatically update and apply our backsplash. I'm going to do the same on this other wall here. I'm just going to bring this down slightly so it's not over the window. And then I'll find a material. I actually found a doll tile uh, material I'd like to place. So we'll use our material painter and just apply that. And then I also have a different material for our countertops. And I found that through our Cambria catalog. And I'm just going to search for the name here. So you can search for specific names as well and I'll just apply that to our countertop area. Then I'm also going to modify the material on one of our walls here. I do like the tan on our walls where the cabinets are positioned, but maybe let's apply this blue color onto this one wall kind of as an accent. 
I'll use my material eyedropper, single click on the blue, get into component mode, and then single click on the wall and that will be applied. And we'll just match a couple different materials here. Maybe we'll have the same wood material as our frame view and maybe the same material on our molding as the interior of that door. So it modifies slightly there. So that kind of gives you an idea of applying the different materials. I'm going to get right back into my library and we're going to drop in our island. So I've already created an island for this space. So I'll just select that from my library, drop it in, and you'll notice that there are lights already positioned on here. And it will affect your 3D view when you add lighting. Um, the program automatically has kind of a standard light for you until you actually start dropping in those additional light fixtures and then that really enhances the different design that you're creating. So with our island here, I've blocked that together. So I'm going to tile vertically here and give you an idea of what this looks like. Um, you'll just use your same exact cabinet tools and apply all of those um, in kind of a, this square block option. I'm going to use my dimension tools here. We're going to position this correctly in the room. So I'll use those temporary dimensions, giving you a lot of efficiency when you're placing objects. So once this has been placed as I need, I'm going to explode this. So at the very bottom, you have explode architectural block. So now you can single click on each individual component and modify that. I used our custom countertop tool to create our custom overhang area so you can modify that and adjust the different dimensions and positioning as you need to. So once you do create an island or entertainment center or pretty much anything that you would like to use again, um, as a block you can just click and drag a selection marquee around all of those items and then at the bottom there is a make architectural block so now it's one unit and at the bottom here you'll also see add to library so with one click you can add that to your library and then of course rename that to uh, like kitchen island one or so forth so that will give you a lot of flexibility so you don't have to recreate the same components over and over. Same with the cabinet. So if you do have a custom cabinet created, once you select that at the very bottom, you'll see that add to library. So you can create your own custom catalogs as you need to. So now that we have our island placed, I'd like to work with our tools to create a custom ceiling. And I found this image, I really like having kind of this square option over our island. And then I'll be applying a different material to the interior of that space. So I'll just close out of there, get back into my cabinet tool, and I'm going to use our soffit tool to create this. So I'll just click and drop one right in there. We're going to open that up and make some different modifications. So for my height, I'd like that to be 8 inches. For the depth, I'd like that to be 10. And then I also want that to place underneath our ceiling. So if we do modify our ceiling heights, it will modify this as well and just make sure that it is always underneath our ceiling. So now that we have our main changes done, I'll select OK. And then you can just drag this out if you do have specific dimensions. Um, of course, you can work with those. I'm just going to be pretty flexible here. I'm going to copy that, reflect it onto the other side of our island, and then we can copy that. And I'm going to just drag that around and bring it over here and use that point to point move tool again. So I'll click on each corner and bring those together and then I'll just drag this down and match that up. We're going to copy that and just reflect that onto the other side. And now we have our custom ceiling started. 
Now I'd like to apply a material to just the interior of this space. So if I use my material eyedropper or material painter, it'll paint our entire ceiling. So I need to create a separate item, so a 3D object that I can apply material to. And I'm going to select our polyline solid. So this is just a solid, um, great to use in many different applications. Uh, enabling you to create that 3D object. We're going to open that up, change the thickness to maybe 3 fourths, and we want the elevation to be from the ceiling. I want the ceiling to top to be 0. And then we'll get into our materials. It just automatically selects concrete, so we need to modify that. And I have a different um, kind of flooring material that I'd like to use. Alright, so now we have that placed in here. I wanted to tell you a little bit about our Adjust Material Definition tool. We'll rotate around slightly. Across the top we have our Adjust Material Definition. It's a little rainbow tool up here. We can use that to adjust materials, um, whether it is a color, whether it's a texture or pattern. So in this case, um, through our pattern, you'll notice that we have our lines here. Those will be represented in our orthographic camera tool, so like the vector views, scaled views. And I would like to rotate this. So let's do 45 degrees on that. And then through our texture, I'd like that angle to be uh, that rotation as well. So this is great for your flooring, any tile, so you can really rotate that. And then we also have our scale. So if you have tile or flooring, uh, whatever texture you've brought in, you can change the scale, make it larger or smaller depending on your needs on that. Or if you take a picture of a granite slab, for instance, and import that into the program, you can select stretch to fit. So when it's applied, it's stretched across your entire countertop and not tiled. So a couple different flexibility options there. We can also blend a different material with this texture. So I would like to actually match our backsplash tones. So I'll use our little eyedropper here. We can single click on that, bring it right off. You can even bring this onto a different website and single click on a material that you'd like to match. And then you have a nice slider here so you can darken that up if you'd like to. We'll select OK. And you'll see how everything modifies on that. This is our standard view um, within Chief Architect. Across the top you do have some different rendering options. So we have this vector kind of orthographic view and that will give you that pattern. We can tile the, the color on or off depending on what you need there. We'll also have our glass house so that enables you to go through, see the shelving all of the different components and through the different rooms. Here's our duotone. You can modify the colors in um, each one of these as well. Here's a technical illustration and our painting option. Watercolor and you can also get into your options here. Maybe you'd like to change your pigment settings and so forth or have line drawings on top of it and that can bring out some additional definition for you. So a couple different rendering controls there and then we do offer the more photorealistic rendering. So this is a ray trace rendering that I've done. Um, a little different material um, you'll notice but uh, this kind of enhances the different metals, reflections, and so forth. Next let's get into our schedules, materials list, and uh, finish out with our plan set here. So through our tools, uh, we do have our schedules listed out here, so it's very easy to create a cabinet schedule. Uh, I'm just going to zoom out here, drop it into place, 
and you'll notice that with the schedule it will automatically modify those cabinet labels to be our callouts now. We can double click on that schedule and create that uh, more in-depth specification. You are able to also add 3D elevation images so let's add that. Let's remove manufacturer um, and comments these, I'm not going to fill these out, so we can definitely just remove those. And I'm going to move that up to our very front option. Through the different panels, you are able to modify your line styles, fill styles, uh, text, whatever text you need to, and then labels. So you do have different callout shapes. You can manipulate the size, um, and of course, all of the labeling as you need to and then you can see how that's been expanded with all of the different elevation views so we now have a visual on all of those cabinets. Before I get into our materials list I'm just going to drop in some electrical here uh, so we can see that in our materials list as well. Uh, through our electrical tools we do have your outlet options so 110 or 220 for your lighting, I've set this up as just a recess light through my defaults and then you can just drop those into place. We also have a multiple copy so you can position those specifically as well so maybe we'd like to have that as the four foot spacing and then we can just click and drag those right across and we can do the same all the way around. Oh, that's already selected. We're good to go there. So it gives you a lot of different efficiency um, when you're placing all of your fixtures, lighting, um, and so forth. And then we also have your connect electrical. So let's place a couple switches here just to show you, give you an idea. Once you place your switch in your design, we have this connect electrical tool and we're just going to connect to a few of our recess lights just to give you an idea here. So once we connect both of those switches um, to our light fixtures, it's going to automatically create a three-way switch for us. So we don't have to find that in our library. The program has a lot of knowledge built in to make it efficient for you. You don't have to go through all of those different steps. So I'll get right into our tools and through our materials list I'll just calculate from all floors that will grab everything that we've placed in the design and uh, I'm going to scroll down here you'll have your windows, doors, cabinetry and that will break it out for your like your base cabinet, the material you're using, the finish, the different components and hardware that make up that cabinet and so forth. You also have your price column so you can enter in your correct pricing in here. Save it as a master list so you can uh, populate that automatically the next time you use that cabinet. We also have additional columns so if you have any markup or labor that you want in here you can create your estimate. You can also export this to Excel uh, so you do have flexibility through um, exporting as well. And if we just keep scrolling down here, I just wanted to show you the final options here with your interior trim, fixtures, appliances, electrical. So everything is listed out here for you and what you're going to be adding to that space. I'll just close out of our materials list here. We don't need to save that for now. So I wanted to create a very basic plan set here. So we'll get into our new layout. The layout page is a separate document and that will enable you to create your title block on there. We're on page one right now. You can create your title block and everything that you'd like to manipulate and have on every single page on uh, page zero. So everything that you want replicated onto your other pages start out on zero and then we'll start placing our floor plan elevation views on page one here. So I'll go right back over to my floor plan. We're going to do a quick dimension here. I'm going to use my auto dimension tool. And through our annotation sets, you can specify how our dimensions will be locating. So I would like to be using our NKBA annotations. 
So if we want it to locate to our uh, rough openings or the casing to center line um, appliance options and cabinetry. So the dimensions need some information on where they're going to locate and that's kind of why we have those annotations. It makes it really easy to um, set that up. So we'll do our auto NKBA dimension. That's going to place it on all of our different areas. And then of course we can modify and delete some of these that we don't really need at this time. I do want to keep our dimension where it shows our location of our door. And then you can see here that it will automatically just drop in all of our lines that we need here. The center line and then end to end. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to send that right over to our layout page. So we have send to layout and then we are able to specify what page we'd like that to go to. The scale and that looks good so I'll select OK. And I'll bring it right over. It brought the schedule over with it. I'm just going to resize this and modify what we'd like to see. And I'm only concerned with the um, pantry door so I'm just going to resize that slightly over there and we can modify and reposition. And then we, if we get into an elevation view I'll use my orthographic tool. This is kind of the orthographic camera view. We'll use the wall elevation and I wanted to show you um, a little something in the program here. So I'm going to click and drag towards our back wall and you'll notice we have our pantry and we have the other wall in here as well. So if we want to just section off one of these areas, we can use our room divider tool. So I'm going to just section out this area. We're just going to click and drag that down and create this wall. So now when I get back into that wall elevation, it'll only do this room, this one space. So that kind of um, cleans that view up for us. And then we can toggle the color on or off depending on what we need to see here. You'll also notice that we have our opening indicators. We can select one of these objects and at the very bottom we have our object layer properties for that item you've selected. So it brings up a nice short list that we can uh, find these opening indicators, uncheck that we'd like to display them and select OK. So you can do that with your electrical um, and all of the different options. You can view them or get into your display options and remove them from your display at that point. And then again I'll use my auto dimensions here. We have our auto NKPA elevations. So that will bring it up for us and then you can also single click on your dimension and you'll notice that we have these diamonds in place. So this is bringing up information on that filler and then we have our center line dimension as well. If you don't want to have your wall cabinets located on this line we can just click on that diamond and drag it right off. So then we'll just have our base cabinets on here. I'm just going through to clean up a few more things here. We can also add, so I'm going to single click on this um, bottom line here and I want the end to end. So I'm going to add one more line here and take off that uh, diamond. So you are able to add or remove the different lines that are placed on here. Alright, so that looks good. We'll send that to our layout. And maybe we want that at half inch to a foot scale. And then that will bring it right over for us. I wanted to show you a few more plan sets. Since that wasn't um, a complete plan set, I wanted to show you through our user center on chiefarchitect.com, you can get into the samples gallery. Here you'll find many different plan sets. So we have the actual plan file that you can download and work with. We have a PDF file, so this is the complete plan set. 
and then we also have different how-to videos. So I'm going to just bring up this parabola bath. So you can bring over all of your different views, your schedule, you can add notes, um, different legends, 3D views, all to your plan set and create your complete documents that you need to. We also offer a trial version so if you haven't worked with Chief Architect yet through products you can get into our free trial download. We do offer a premiere so that's the top of the line has all of your interior features plus your structural so all your framing, custom roof design, landscaping, site plan, um, information, deck design and so forth. Um, if you're only focusing on kitchen, um, bath, interior spaces, uh, you can do most everything I did today with our interiors version. Uh, so two options for you. We do have overview videos, um, great way to kind of walk through those trial versions and work through the program. If you'd like to talk with other Chief Architect users, we do have a user forum um, called Chief Talk. So definitely visit Chief Talk to um, talk with our other users and if you have any questions that's a great place um, to go as well. We also have many different learning resources through the website through our training videos, knowledge base, how-to articles, different webinars and so forth. If you're interested in manufacturer catalogs you can click on this catalog downloads and this will bring you right into our 3D library. I'm going to expand our cabinets here so you can really go through and see all of the different manufacturer items that we offer um, and these will be available as a download. So as I mentioned we do have a premiere or interiors version. Um, you do have the option to either purchase them outright or we offer a rental option for the Chief Architect Premiere. Um, at $1.99 a month. In both instances you'll be receiving um, the support and software assurance so that will get you access to our priority technical support. You can call us with any questions and then we also have uh, many more training videos available to you along with those manufacturer and bonus catalogs, new versions that are released and discounts on additional licenses. So with Chief Architect it's a one user license. You can use it on as many computers as you need to. Just run it on one computer at a time. So if you have multiple people needing it at the same time that's when those additional license discounts come into play. So feel free to give us a call, email us. Um, we're here to help you out, get you into the right program. We'll be on for a few more minutes here on the webinar, so type in any questions that you have and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Thanks so much. Have a great day.